Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. and I'm joined by the Dark Veil, Rich Stambolian. Pay that man his money. What's going on? <laughs> that you are the Dark Veil. Yeah. Is that what you're searching? Uh, the Black Veil? Black Veil. Yeah. This oh. is an interesting like tattoo shop in Salem, Massachusetts. I'm not giving them a plug or anything. It's just a cool t-shirt. I don't, I don't know if this is good or not. You know? They're good. They're really good. Are they good? They have like a, uh, I think they have a six month uh, wait to get a tattoo. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm actually thinking about changing my mic mic arm here too. So yeah. I can freaking see you yeah because i'm like peeking you know what i don't we know if you know like rich is like right here yeah so like i gotta do like one of these see like look like hold on oh, no. Where is it? Come here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the show is all about professional uh. wrestling the year is ending and i guess we could talk about the year end shows that we do here annually we have the best of and the worst of coming up uh, let's see what days will do that. Uh, prediction show we'll do on the 29th. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, best of we'll do on the, you know what? You want to do worst of next week? Let's do worst of, let's do best of, and then we also have a special treat where we're going to go back and show you guys our predictions for 2022. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I don't remember what I predicted. Uh, but you MG, were right about a lot of shit. MG dude. said that I was right about a yeah. lot of stuff, and, and we he said that one of them was like a wacky prediction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We both had some wacky predictions, so we're gonna we're gonna put that out there for you guys in a couple of weeks, yeah. uh, just so you could take a look. Also, uh, speaking of the mic stuff, yeah, uh, Conan O'Brien's podcast has a great setup where it's it's the stand is in the middle. Okay. And it's just two coming out, low and up. Yeah, they're like low and up mic yeah. arms. That's the new thing now. Yeah, I think everybody it. realized how absurd these giant mic arms are. Because they're right, they're blocking you. Yeah. If you're, especially if you're just talking to somebody. Yeah. It works on Hot 97. You know? Everything works on Hot yeah. 97. Hard to get a ticket. Funkmaster Flex. Uh, yesterday I was on Will Washington's show on Fightful. How's he doing? Day after dinner. He's the best, dude. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's great. He's a great dude. Uh, always have a great time with him. Go check it out on Fightful's YouTube channel. Big shout out to Will. Uh, we were talking about, like, it, it, you know, we've created this, like, very cool environment where everybody kind of gets along, you know? Yeah, like, for sure. No, there's no, like, like I was I was beating on Raj. I was like, give it up, Raj, you're <laughs> old. I started screaming, Raj is old. Like, Did he I retire? I don't know if he's, like, <laughs> he's semi. I don't know. But, you know, he's, like... I've had such a blast getting drinks with him and Issa yeah, yeah. and Sean, like uh, hanging out with meeting Sean in, in yeah. Chicago. Like everybody's mad cool. Like, Zero invites for me, by the way. It's just you're it's, invited. <laughs> you're always invited. It's, it's, invites for the day busy. after. Oh, it's Tuesday. Oh, yesterday. By the way, where were you? <laughs> so uh, I wanted to give a shout out if you want to go check that show out. It was a recap of Dynamite. Also, if you love what we're doing, hit the Super Chat button. You can submit your Super Chat questions, and it bumps you to the top of the list, so we make sure we get to them at the end of the show when we do our Q&A segment. And, and go sign up for our Patreon. Our Patreon goes to our producers. It pays for MG to uh, F up every <laughs> note that we create. Whatever, he, whatever that guy does, it yeah, pays for it. It, it, it <laughs> gives some money to Suncast for also editing and producing. You know, it, it's not a one-man shop here. It's it's a multi-man. of We're multiple Matt Men here. They're, it's Matt Men. Matt Men. It's not Matt Man. It's Matt Man. Yeah. So uh, it's, a, it's a big crew here. And, you know, around the holidays, I like to give them a little bit. So help me out with that. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where do you want to go? Actually, Rich, how was your week? I didn't even ask you. I know. It's been so long since we were in the theater together. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen you in close to a month. It's been wild. Uh, yeah. My week has been pretty good, actually. But uh, I wanted to be here today. I'm, you know, I've been feeling good. I wanted to see. I wanted to calm you down. I know you've had a stressful couple of weeks. Very stressful. Uh, there's nothing so I could do to calm you down, by the way. And there's nothing I could do about your problems, either. <laughs> <laughs> I could just be here and talk about wrestling. Hey, uh, MG, could you switch the cameras today or no? Do you have that capability on the show? Oh, I do not. Again. He has like an 18 no. minute delay when we talk I to know. him. No, why? Why is <laughs> that? Because it's a freaking tin can going to, going to Michigan. This, oh, you know what? I did touch the string outside. Maybe that's, <laughs> that's why. That's a problem, dude. <laughs> don't touch mm -hmm. that string. Uh, I don't have right. that capability. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, make sure that you get that capability because I like to, uh, I want to concentrate on the show. I've gotten lazy here on the show where I do nothing, I just show up and talk. So let's go into this. Where do you, you want to start it with the WWE stuff? Yeah, sure. As right. per Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Our boss! Uh, I guess so. Loosely. Loosely. <laughs> Loosely. He doesn't I don't, care what we do. I don't think he knows who we are. I don't think, honestly, you've been hosting Observer. I don't think he knows who you He's are. He's on the show. He has no clue. He's like, <laughs> he, he, you know what he does? This is how it works. He's like, listen, when you hit the quota of talking about my biceps, mm -hmm. then I'll come on. I think when uh, when he gets off the air with you, he's like, 
one week he'll what be a mistake. like one week he'll be like ah, god bless john alba and then <laughs> and then one the week after that he's like ah, god bless chris van vliet <laughs> 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 that's it he's just like who, who by the way that? I got a I got something here not my Game of Thrones action oh there you go wow. I got a the new Observer uh, this is not Ooh. a this is not a plug I don't get paid to promote this I, I paid for this book Vader it's the uh, 1995 yearbook and do you know why 95 was such a historic year for pro wrestling why the Monday Night Wars began wow so uh, this is the yearbook this is every issue of the Observer for that year crazy all 50 million words used so i just i just turned to chapter 40 44 sean michaels assaulted in syracuse sean michaels sean michaels sean michaels so, uh, go check it out it's on amazon nice little gift here i like love that. it i love vader i miss vader you miss vader i do miss vader what was his what was his saying hey um, do you hey listen rich fear no man f- f- listen, f- rich. feel no cold if you want to put on the helmet God, it's 80 dollars okay know. I know. They tried to hit you up. Virgil's still looking for that twenty dollars from you. I think uh I think Vir that's 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 the gimmick. That's the forever gimmick for Virgil. Yeah. Uh yes, as per Dave Meltzer and Wrestling Observer Newsletter, there have been discussions about Roman Reigns working the two nights at WrestleMania, possibly one night against Cody and one night against The Rock. I would love him to drop the title to Cody night one, night two, boom. I'm gonna give a quote. Rock. I'm gonna give a quote from somebody I spoke to this morning about this. Okay. From WWE. They wrote, and I and I quote, "That is absolutely effing absurd. It's possible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think it's happening. Yeah. Let me just put that yeah. out there. I I don't think this is going to happen. Um, yeah, discussions for sure. Mm-hmm. I could see that being an option. But what do you do? You do Cody night one. He loses to Cody, and then Rock comes out and is like, you're not the tribal chief anymore. And then he has to wrestle again. It takes something yeah. out of it." It's, I don't want to see Roman wrestle twice. There's Ro- or, or 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 if they're really going to strap the rocket to Cody, does Roman beat the Rock on night one and then lose to Cody on night two? I think people would be really angry at that. Why? You, know, you would I don't take get the away Cody hate. because you. It's not the Cody hate. You would take the thunder away. Okay. Because now it's like, of course he's going to lose. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And I got to because think about how many people would be disappointed. That has to be night two. That match. Rock because, and Roman. Yeah. 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 yeah because yeah. if if he. There's going to be a large portion of the fan base that wants The Rock to win, Mm -hmm. right? You're going to suck that energy out of them on night two. I don't think it's going to be the opposite where Cody, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I want Cody to beat him because he beat The Rock. I think people are going to see it as how can Cody beat him if The Rock can't? You know, wrestling's fake. Look at this. How could how could anybody lose to The Rock? If if this was a few years ago. Yeah. uh, The Rock and Roman would have had. A three matches, right? And they would have become a tag team, and they would have beco- would have been called Rock and Robin. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's 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 wrestling for you. But now, look, what do you want to happen? Um, as a fan, as a fan, not as an analyst, not as Andrew Zarian, the journalist. As a fan, I, I want to see Rock and I want to see Dwayne and 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 Roman and Ro- right. for sure. Yeah. I want to see yeah, that, yeah. right? I want to see Cody with the title. Yes. I don't know. I think, too, you know, Cody's injury mm-hmm. extended, I, in my opinion, the entire bloodline dominance. Yes. Because there's a very good chance somebody would have said, okay, we got to put the title on Cody now. So Roman is cleared for the mm-hmm. new year to be with Dwayne. I think it was a happy accident, right? Um, it was a happy accident, but now they got to They got to figure out, okay, Cody wins Rumble. Mm-hmm. Does, does, does Rock show up at number thirty in that in the in that building and blow the roof off? They're in the Alamo Dome, right? Yeah, I don't know. You have to ask Hulk Hogan. I gotta ask. Hey Hulk, <laughs> can you tell me uh, were they in the Alamo Dome? Uh, I think they are. I and then you also have Seth in the mix. You know, I think he's kind of on the fringe of that. So then, then here's the other thing. And this is what what I've heard the, a conversation to, and I'll tell you this is a direct conversation Please, yeah. to split the titles up again, and how they could possibly do it. Uh huh. Because you event, I think Roman's dominance really makes sense because he's had both those titles. He genuinely is yeah. the undisputed WWE champion. He's the guy. Right? He's the guy. He's the greatest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is the next guy 
Are you telling me that the next guy gets both titles too? Does the next guy split the title? Does does you know Cody win the title then lose the Universal? I don't like the two titles, man. I just want one title to be honest. Like it's co- it's a cool aesthetic, like Roman it's coming out with two cool belts aesthetic. looks yeah. awesome. <clears throat> what about this? I'm gonna pitch something to you. Let me know what you think of it. All right. Cody's in the ring. Number thirty hits. It's the Rock. And you do a stare down. They go, okay, you know what? That would... That... Double double fall. Oh, man. And that sets up WrestleMania. Night one and night two. You know what? That that actually... Would I want to see it? It's not what my vision, but I could see that becoming a thing. Pretty cool. But then you got Elimination Chamber also. Jeez, yeah. Which sets up a contender. Well, actually, does it? Does it? They should eliminate Elimination Chamber. Here's another thing. I got another no, question. Elimination Chamber is happening because it's announced. Okay. Sold um, out, Montreal. Here's here's a question for you. Do you think the bloodline is going on so long because Triple H has the reins to the company and he's almost modeling it after his own run where eventually I think everybody in that faction is going to turn on him, much like DX? Very possible. Uh, it's continuing because they have those, the weight, like a way to measure. Yeah, Outs- like they obviously they have ratings measurement, mm-hmm. they have social measurement, they have all those, you know, uh, analytics that are driving it, and it is hot. It is not going away. The merch is selling. The interest mm-hmm. level is as high as it's been. Uh-huh. It they haven't had a dip. It's been an incline consistently with the bloodline. People aren't sick of it. Sammy come into it. I think added, it's Sammy. Yeah, it added. <clears throat> it, it refreshed it, and you're probably going to run out of time here around Mania, but. Yeah. They want to milk this thing as long as they can, and they should because it's a it's it's the mega ratings number. It's a lot of money, and it's it's something I look forward to whenever they're on the air. To be honest, with you. I I honestly I was so against this, and you were the one that was saying Rock and Roman could be for the title yeah. for for like a year, and I was against it. I was like, they, I don't want them to do it. I don't think they can do it now. Like I don't. How yeah, can they yeah, do yeah. it? Right? Like who wins the? It's it's this is my favorite time of the year. And the Cody element has kind of shaken things up here with what do you do? Obviously, you need to put that title on Cody. But the other thing we don't know is what's his reception going to be? I think it's going to be bonkers, man. I hope it is. You heard his reception when he came back, right? Like, what a debut. What a debut. What What a great series of matches before he got hurt. I think they have an inherent... Thing in the yes. Roman storyline where it's almost like the titles don't matter to him because he could say, and this sucks. I, I'm going to say like, I'm going to project this and it would suck for Cody. But if he's like, yo man, titles don't matter. I'm still the head of the table. And then that's when the rock shows up and he's like, let me tell you something. I've been putting food on that table since 1998. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Seven bucks production. Well, blah, that's going to be, blah, that's going to be the promo, right? That's good. <laughs> it's going to be just Jumanji. He yells Jumanji at him for 20 minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, that's gonna be it. I, yeah. but they don't have too many more years of getting that done. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. out of time here. They're out of time, and this is coming from people within WWE. <sighs> mm-hmm. They are gonna, they are running out. They're not out of time. They're gonna run out of time to get this match done. Yeah. Anything could happen. Now the stars have aligned. His schedule is lighter because of the XFL. They want that synergy with the XFL for sure. Yeah. I mean, how Rock do you has not? to win, right? The, I mean, and sh- is the XFL still going on then? Uh, you know what? Uh, Jonathan would know this. The so Rock wins. XFL kicks off February 18, 2023. February 18, 2023. And it run- so it is running. So their, pl- their finals will be happening because they're not running what? They're not running uh, 16 weeks, are they? I don't think it's so. It's like eight weeks? Yeah. The Rock wins. Thank the you. stadium explodes and he catches a football and just throws it right at the camera. And that's it. Yeah, that's that, it. That's, that's how it ends. That's your tie-in. No, he Boom. does one of these. He does one of these. X- <laughs> it's spelling FCW. <laughs> what are you spelling right now? I'm getting worried. Did you get bit by Mr. Gonzo and oh, now you can't spell? Is, oh, I can't control it. <laughs> at every at every full moon you can't spell. <laughs> Uh, raw viewership down draws the lowest viewed hour in the show's history 
Hour one did 1.75 million, started strong at 8 o'clock. 1.6 million, hour two. The 10 p.m. hour, hour three, 1.26 million. Mm-hmm. It plummeted. Plummeted. Um, you know, they kind of, they kind of, and the final rating was 1.536. Uh, they, it was a very top heavy show. They tried to get everything done in the first two hours and an hour three. They're like, yeah, whatever. They had that convoluted main event. Uh, I did not stay live for hour three. And I don't think a lot of other people did. No, nah, you know what? Um, it's been, it's had its ups and downs, right? Um, you know what I'm really liking about Raw? What? Judgment Day. Yeah, dude. All the Judgment Day Rhea, stuff. Rhea, Rhea's a million bucks. Rhea. The, Rehabbed her totally, right? They fit so perfectly. They gel so well together. Um, I do think it's it's them trying to do their WWE version of like a spooky bullet club. She. It has been a a very slow descent into the macabre for her. I love it. I love it yeah. too. Uh, but she did not start off like that. No. She was like a baby. She was like a baby clean, you know, super clean baby face, blonde, mm-hmm. you know, young. And she's transcended into madness. Yeah, I love it. I, where when, she's she's an occultist now, which I love. When they flipped the switch on her in NXT and she started coming out with the spikes and all that stuff, big fan. I also can't believe she's only 5'7". She needs, you know what, <laughs> I know, me either. I don't believe it. I don't freaking believe it. I don't believe it because I get yelled at her all the time. I'm like, mm-hmm. she's a giant. Everyone's like, no, she's not. She's 5'6". She's wide, though. She's she, mad wide. Like Jack. Jack. Jacked. jacked. <laughs> uh, we should okay, look. XFL we schedule. Jacked, the XFL schedule will go until April 27th. It's 12 weeks total. Full 23 schedule is not out yet. Okay, so it's a full 12 weeks. That's yeah, we should get... We should get. Was. Excuse me? 2020 was a full 12 weeks. They haven't released the 2023 schedule, but I'm guessing it's going to fall in line with what okay. they tried to do in 2020. Cool. Jonathan and MG need catchphrases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know, I have one at work. Did you really? Yeah, I got two. Okay, got I it. Carumba. <laughs> I I Carumba all fucking day long. Okay, I I, I I'm kind of uh-huh. gaslighting people into thinking it's my catchphrase. Okay. I only do it at work. And Hachi Machi. So the critic and the Simpsons. Yep, you're ripping off at work. And the Simpsons. He's like, nobody's gonna get these references. Nobody gets these them. girls aren't gonna get these references. They're like ten. Uh, everybody's, I like, everybody's like twenty one years old. <laughs> not ten. They're not ten years old. They're twenty years old. Oh, All right, girl. 20, 20, 21. Uh He works at an orphanage. I <laughs> work at an orphanage, and I just look at them and go, I couldn't get adopted today. Hachi machi. <laughs> I grew up. Somebody will buy you one day. That's how it works, right? That is how it works. You walk in with the cash, buy a couple of kids. just cash. Uh, I knew someone. Mm-hmm. That they got adopted cash. Oh, then, yeah. yeah, no, I swear wow. to God, no, I swear to God, from the Ukraine. You're, like, oh, okay. As a I child. thought you met like on Queens Boulevard. No, no, no. They were like smuggled into this country. Wow, okay. cash, crazy, crazy story from the from the eighties. Did they? Uh, is there? Did everything work out for them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. He's a lawyer. Yeah, great. <laughs> he's a lawyer now. At, you know, when you do that, at one point, did the, were the parents like, "Listen, I kind of want a refund. I got buyer's remorse." <laughs> Did they also? Did they buy him when he was an adult, or did they buy him? No, he kid? he was a lawyer already. They just bought him. <laughs> they just brought him over. Open up a vape shop with me. Uh, Sean Mike. Oh, ooh, the Nine Lives of Vince McMahon premieres on Vice. I'm curious about this. Tuesday at nine, featuring our buddy and uh, higher up Dave Meltzer, uh, Brian Alvarez, and others that we know. What does that mean? You know, they didn't ask me. I do a great Vince McMahon. Uh, hey, uh, ha. Ha, ha. what am I doing? What's going on? Uh, Where am I? Camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. Um, camera one, camera two. I wonder who else is going to be on there that we know. I'm sure everybody. Yeah. Denise. Like I'm everybody sure. but us. Everybody but us. <laughs> Nobody wants us. No. <laughs> it's too much. I'm too wild. Too hot to handle. Shawn Michaels' media call for NXT deadline. Um, regarding William Regal, he said there's nothing official to announce. I mean, it's like baby steps. You know, people are freaking out about the Regal thing. I say good for him. Listen, dude, you know, I people are upset over this. Obviously, it, it is a, a detriment to AEW having mm. him leave. Having anybody like Regal sure. in yeah. your in your arsenal is mm. very valuable. He he's very well respected. Uh definitely he's gonna be missed there, but you know, his son is there, his best friends are there. Yeah. Uh, this guy's an institution in WWE. He was released. In most people's opinions, wrongfully, yeah, this guy should have never been released during the pandemic. 
uh, loyal, loyal guy uh, to that company. He's mm-hmm. he's helped out with developing so many young talent in that company uh, within NXT and everything else. He, he's a great mind. Um, you know, and this kind of falls in line with what they're planning on doing with developmental and changing NXT kind of closer to what it was previously mm-hmm. rather than the uh, the new version of it. You know what's really interesting about this? It's This is not a knock against AEW or anything, but it's interesting how in the last year, I want to say there are two guys, Cody and Will and Regal. Yeah, I'm going to go back to WWE. I'm going back home. But you know, that that's that's the business, yeah. right? Like, you want options. Now they got it. The whole purpose, everybody said mm-hmm. in the business, you know, this is great for the wrestlers. You yeah. have another place to go that's going to pay you, that you can make money. Impact is great, but... Yes. You know, there's only so much headroom that that company has. They got to be, you know, very strategic on who they get and when they get them and how they get them and how much they pay them. Uh, same thing. Yeah. Ring of Honor is not here. New Japan is exists, but that's really they're not what they were. You're gonna you're gonna ago. have to want to go to New Japan. You know? Yeah, yeah. You're like, gonna want to go to New Japan. Yeah. That that's the the big difference. And also, like, AEW and WWE have the one thing in common where it's like national exposure. You know, yeah. like big time, like impact doesn't have that, you know, like where, if you had the option, where would you go? If I had the option? Yeah. Uh, very good question. The easy, right. The easier schedule with the most face time uh, and I, the better deal. Right. You don't want to tour the country. You don't want to be on the road. I would, I would, year. if I, I would go to AEW. Yeah. yeah. Well, also how much, how much? Same price. Same price. Same price. AEW. But you get a better merch deal at WWE. Um, you get those a- I know I, I'm a little shirts. bit of a I'm a little bit of a wild horse when yeah. it comes to my work schedule. Uh-huh. I don't like to be bogged down. Right. I right. like my freedom. I would most likely go to AEW. Uh-huh. Work a couple days a week. Yeah. Do a rampage taping. Yeah. What am I doing there? I'm curious. You're oh, I'm a wrestler. You're wrestling. I'm a wrestling you're, boy. You're putting out AWO shirts. Oh, AWO. Yeah. Andrew World Order. Andrew World. <laughs> yeah. It's Andrew's World, not Wardlow. <laughs> Also, another one like not, not that I brought that up with the with the jumping ship. Um, I don't know if I, I'm getting ahead of ourselves here, but I definitely think Miro's going to end up back in WWE. Miro's an interesting story. There's, did you see the story on Miro? Fightful put out uh, that they they have nothing for him. So Fightful put out that there was nothing for him. Uh, Dave put out a story saying that's not entirely the way it went. They did have something for him. Miro did not want to do it. Interesting. So I guess they're both right, you know. If if you don't want to do it, they got nothing for you to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this speaks to that to that group that came in around that time. Uh, yeah, you know, because there's there's a lot of those guys that are not being used or were not used properly. I think Miro's one of those guys. Uh, they put him in that weird video game thing, right? I think and then he started cause... cutting those insane Eastern European promos that I would hear in my in my. When I was a child coming I'm out of my living room. <laughs> Th- that's exactly what I would hear <laughs> in my <laughs> living room nightmare. at 2 in the freaking morning. Uh-huh. All sm- I, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating this. You, but you grew up in a haunted house. I grew up in a haunted house. None <laughs> of them were alive, yeah. <laughs> my grandfather's uh, weird Bulgarian deals he would do at 2 in the morning. The mere Meaning, thing is, yeah. The mere thing is weird. I uh, unlocked a, a, a childhood trauma right now. I'm sorry. Oh, it's happening. Again. Should we continue with the Shawn Michaels yeah, yeah, media go. call? Yeah. By the way, after every single statement and point that Shawn Michaels made, he said, I'm sorry, I love you under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> Michaels confirmed that NXT Vengeance Day will head to Charlotte, North Carolina on Saturday, February 4th, with tickets going on sale next Friday. Uh, when asked about national touring, he said that they'll see how it goes and go from there. Solid answer. I feel like this wasn't the most groundbreaking call. Uh, it was not a groundbreaking call. It was a very by the book, very by the book uh, WWE press conference. They did. I mean, the European uh, announcement is coming, which is going to be nice. That's that's the uh, that's that's the big takeaway for me. Uh, also, pay per views now are coming back. PLEs are coming back for them in cool. bigger buildings, which uh, they're going to need to stack up that roster and do something different. And this kind of aligns with. You know, going back to that older model of companion shows for the big four. You know, the why uh, that's one thing that I that kind of drove me crazy about NXT. And I always we always try not to get like too incensed about stuff like this. But you had the perfect shows with those NXT takeovers, right? Those NXT takeover Brooklyn's so were good. a wrestling fan's dream. But are they now? 
I think if they could, if they did it now with, uh, considering we have AEW with certain tweaks to the roster, I think if they did it now, yes. Okay. You know, I think, I think it would be really cool. And, and look what they're doing too with NXT now. Like you had, um, the new day show up to challenge pretty deadly for the titles, you know? So yeah. if they do something like that, sure. Why not? Yeah. You know, um, in AEW news, AEW is returning to Canada for a Tuesday edition of Dynamite. They'll be in Winnipeg on uh, March 14th. The Kingdom of Canada. Uh, this is part of their plan with, and this is where mm-hmm. Jeff Jarrett helps with, right? New buildings. Yep. New markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday on the show, uh, Will Washington, when I was on his show, mm-hmm. he did a stat. They went to like, uh, they've added another 12 markets. Mm-hmm. I think to their list wow. so far for the year. I can't remember exactly what, what it was, but uh, you've added the West coast. Now you've added Canada, but it's time to start going into new markets and trying something new because the repeat markets like Chicago and New York, it, it, it's, there's only so many shows you can run. Um, I do think the main event for the show will be Kenny versus Jericho. I hope so. Two Winnipeg boys. Yeah. Uh, as per, uh, Mm. This week's dynamite. Oh, you know what? You go into the the numbers. I this, can't do the numbers. I can't. This read. week's dynamite averaged eight hundred and forty thousand, the lowest since June twenty second. But there was an issue with Spectrum. Thirty yes. million homes were affected. There was no TNT or TBS on those. Uh, so when I flipped to to the bit the oh the, you had that problem. Yes, the lead in is the dumb dumb Big Bang Theory. Yes. No offense to anybody I who likes it, show. but you have poor taste. Um, once again, if you like the Big Bang Theory, please don't talk to me. Uh, so <laughs> the lead in is the big bang theory. And for the first about 20 minutes of dynamite was the last frame of that oh, show. No. But on my iPad, on the spectrum app, it worked. It worked perfectly. Okay. Interesting. And it was kind of nice. And then about a half an hour, I just kept like checking the channel and then I ended up watching it on TV, you know? But yeah, like I was wondering if that was, uh, I even unplugged my cable box, like old school, plugged it back in, waited a minute, plug it back in. Um, Am I the only one who has cable? I feel like I am. I have YouTube TV. Yeah, that's not cable. I mean, like, yeah. like a coax, traditional, like, like traditional, a coax, like a box. No, I think you're the only one left out of anybody we know, right? And you, and, and you're gonna hold on forever because you did not have cable when you were growing no, up. No, that's that's now a lie. you're doing the opposite. Nobody has cable, and you're just hanging on to. I'm it. hanging on to it. I love my HBO. I know I can get it without paying for it. I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. You knows. He knows what I mean. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um. Tony Khan's media call. Tony Khan's media call. So I got a, I got a DM from Tony about this. Mm-hmm. So John Alba uh, was was tweeting about <laughs> John was tweeting about the event uh, and like confusion with the time and day. And I got a message from Tony like like eight o'clock at night, and he's like, "The media calls at one." I messaged the other account by mistake. <laughs> I went. <laughs> I was like, "Great." I, I love that this man in his infinite insanity mm-hmm. has the time for weird pro wrestling internet memes. I think um I think he also confuses you with Chris Van Vliet and clearly John Alba. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he tried to sign me. He thought I was Seth Rollins at, at the Arthur Ashe show. Hey, he's Sethy. like, you saw my shoes and my pants, and he's like, I need to sign you, Seth. When's your contract up? Sethy baby, he called you Sethy baby. Yeah, Sethy baby, how you doing? <laughs> I like it. Why is he French now? Oh, <laughs> can that be his new voice? Guys. You did not uh, know. Uh, uh, like Pepe Le Pew. Tony Khan. Tony Khan. Said the baby, come sign with me. I love you. I love look that. That's a hair. good Tony Khan. You look like Chris Van Vliet. That's what he needs to do in those scrums. You look like that. Call on Denise Salcedo. That raconteur, Jean Alba. <laughs> that ins- the inscrupulous Denise Salcedo. Where's Denise? That's it. That's my Tony Khan from now I on. I love that's that. It. That's that's his voice from that now on. That is it. <laughs> Someone needs, you know what? Someone needs to Photoshop his dad's mustache. And a baguette, and there you go. Make him fr- a little beret too. Don't a little forget beret. Tony needs a little beret. Don't forget my beret. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> there you go. Jonathan's there you go. Thank like, you. Why is Jonathan so low right now on the monitor? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, bad luck. You know what he's doing. He's doing down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he opened up the call by filling everybody in <laughs> about his mother's status. His mother had two strokes. Uh, mm. Unbelievable. Um, best wishes to the Khan family. Obviously, yeah. uh, this was. Right around the time of All Out and everything was happening. Uh, and she had her second one on his birthday. Wild, wild, wild. Uh, he said the situation helped give him a better perspective on the importance of family as Regal requested the company mm. to not pick up his option. 
He would continue. He would return to WWE as a coach uh, for his son and spend time alongside longtime friends in his golden years of his career. Uh, he will not be able to be an on-screen per the release clause. He also <laughs> said the future of ROH will be addressed on Saturday and alluded to something being revealed about a weekly show. I've said this for a while now. I'm very excited. This is when it has to happen. This is a good opportunity for them. By the way, kudos to Tony. 4 p.m. pay-per-view. <laughs> The best. The best. <laughs> the best. The best. Uh, he didn't say he would ha have less ROH TV or he did say he would have less ROH TV on RO on Take Let's a breath. This again. Take a breath. Tony pretty much said there's going to be less ROH representation on AEW TV following this week because they'll most likely be ramping up for their TV show. I'm filling in some of those blanks there. You did it. Yeah, thank you. You got there. Uh, in regards to Friday's all-time loan number for Rampage, Khan said that he uh, to expect a big card for Friday, uh, and it's an all-hands-on-deck situation with strong matches in the future. Great. You know what? Adjust course. Love it. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Uh, I You know, and my, my problem with Rampage is never has never been the actual show. Mm. Yeah, they have some weeks that it's, it's a much uh, lower caliber card. Yeah. But yeah. more than anything, it's the freaking time frame. This was my proposal. Yeah. Okay, this is my proposal. You ready for this? Hit me. Take that Rampage. Mm -hmm. Make it an ROH one-hour show on Fridays. Yeah. Take Saturdays. You had an opportunity with Battle of the Belts. Yes. I, whether or not that was a test to see if you could do something on a Saturday, mm -hmm. late afternoon, early evening or not, I think if you do a two-hour Rampage, six to eight, on TBS or TNT... On a Saturday, I don't know what they have in that time slot, so it could be impossible to do. But that would be my perfect program, back to back. Mm -hmm. I have no problem watching a one-hour ROH show on a Saturday morning, DVRing it. Right? <laughs> I know yeah. that's part of the problem that it's mm. it's DVRable, but yeah. I would love a quick one-hour uh, ROH show. I would love a two-hour Rampage that takes place on a Saturday. I always watched Rampage on Sunday. You watch Rampage on on Sunday? Yeah, I do. Did that take did that take your breath away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh also um we have Shane Taylor is his involvement in, in Final Battle was pitched by Keith Lee. Love it. That was Good. interesting. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh Sasha Banks news. Everybody's going crazy for Sasha Banks, aka Mercedes Renato. Vernado. Her uncle's here. Saying that wrong. Her okay. uncle. Hey. Oh, she got, Her cousin. was it Snoop <gasps> on a stoop? Oh my god, you broke him. I broke him. Here he is. Hey everybody, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> my my son got very upset at the the blunt in his mouth and he broke it off on he, the other one. I have two of them. He didn't know what it was. He did not know what it Your was. Your son does not like big tobacco. He does not like big tobacco. He's like, I don't like smoke. We were smoking in we were smoking giant cigars in your back. This yeah, is a true story. This we were smoking giant cigars in your backyard a few months a couple months ago, October first, I believe. And your son, Hunter, came out, adorable, most adorable kid on the planet, and was like Smoking's bad. Put those out. What are you guys doing? He yelled at us. Like, he's he's always just shoving up our ass. Yeah, it was very. I was like, damn. I immediately put mine out. <laughs> I was like, okay, Hunter. And then we put the cigarettes out on each other's foreheads. The yeah. cigars. Yeah. Um, apparently, Sasha Banks, uh, aka Mercedes, will be at Wrestle Kingdom 17 on January 4th. In what capacity? That is up in the air. But I'm assuming it's going to be a match with Kyrie Sane. I would imagine it would be with Kyrie. Um, I I got some wind of this, and I was talking to Will a little off the air about mm. it. Uh, when she was training with Hoovy, like a couple of people reached out and be like, oh, she's getting ready to do something different. She's mm. not going to Hoovy for WWE preparation. Oh, yeah, no, forget right? it. <laughs> like, obviously, you train with other people occasionally. Yeah. They all yeah. do this. They all they all train in other camps to learn different things. You know, That's why Brian Kendrick, up until uh, the, the, the tape from... 15 years ago surfaced mm -hmm. he was very hands-on with a yeah. lot of people uh, ronda rousey that's why she he was backstage and he was back to help produce her match that yeah. did not go well did not go uh, well. at that show so you know regardless of what he said or did not a lot of people have used brian kendrick to mm. to advance their skill set someone like hoovy that that is such a unique wrestler helping sasha is preparing you for something a little different mm -hmm. i believe conan said that she was he believe uh, on his podcast said that uh, she was getting ready also to go somewhere else. Cool. So going to New Japan, very cool. However, there's another bit of news here. And I would say 
This is a bigger story to me, okay. right? The biggest story here is that Saraya on Dynamite challenged uh, Britt Baker and Jamie to a tag match where she has a secret opponent. A secret partner. Secret par- partner. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to face you guys and somebody and else. And somebody else, but I'm not telling you who it I is. I tell you who it is. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I want that to be her, be, be Soraya's voice from now on. Hey, listen, hey, guys. Listen, guys. Hey, guys. Everybody. everybody. I'm, I'm from England. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from England. What are you talking about? I'm from jolly old England. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Uh, Best wrestling impressions on the internet. Yeah, there's nobody right that tops it. Tony, hey. Tony Khan. Tony, nice to see you. Uh, very nice to see you too, Andrew Zarian. Now your shirt is so open today. Where is your, what happened to your chest hair? I'll put some more. There you go, Tony. Chest uh, hair has disappeared. <laughs> no, it's there. It's very chest hairy today. I haven't trimmed. Are we going to get in trouble for French Tony Khan? French Tony Khan is great. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Tony's going to love it. Gonzo likes it. Gonzo's dying. Look Gonzo's dying. He loves it. I don't think Jonathan loves it. <laughs> Yo, Jonathan is slowly turning into Lawrence Taylor. Have you noticed this? He is. He's, His freaking cross earring is getting bigger and bigger. He's ter- he's also sinking in the monitor. Like he's just getting lower and lower. I think he made a flashlight out of a. Uh, <laughs> he made a flashlight out of a paper towel roll and two chicken cutlets. By the way, nobody <laughs> so looks like nobody. <laughs> nobody. Nobody knows or cares about this, but we find it hysterical, and I need this today. Trust uh, me. All right, I'm here for you, brother. I'm here for you. <laughs> Uh, Sasha Banks, yeah, man, I'm excited to see this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is a very cool moment for Sasha. Uh-huh. But what does it mean for AEW if she is signing with AEW, right? Yeah. This is a big get for Tony, obviously. Huge. And he he kind of needs this, considering Cody's defecting and, and the CM Punk uh, insane situation. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do something, and and Sasha is a big name. What's the best work of all time? Uh, Brett uh, screwing or, or or the CM Punk or the CM Punk? Is I it... think the CM Punk <laughs> thing is the biggest work of all time. Montreal screw job or yeah. a CM Punk flipping his lid. You want to do like a wrestling conspiracy show? Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, do let's it. Do... Ah, what did he really mean let's... when he wrote WCW? I guarantee <laughs> you, if we ever did that, we will attract a kind of viewer that we've never had before. Yeah, I agree with you, man. <laughs> A lot of 1776 in our chat room would, would start happening. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ruh, <Ruh-ruh. laughs> Can I add something on that? No. 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 <laughs> no. We know what you're going to no, say. We knew where you were on that day. You only have, you have like a month left to celebrate again, okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, regarding that match, uh, the Wrestle Kingdom, the Stardom show is running uh, the 29th, where the, her opponent, Kari's opponent, is defending the tag title. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of injury angle there. Oh, maybe. And then on the first, they announce uh, a new opponent. Okay. I, that would be the only way to get there, I think. Yes, you're, more, her... you're, you're heavier into stardom and, and, and Japanese women's wrestling than we are. So I will take I, I just paid attention. Them. Just something to kind of look at yeah. and see where what happens there. That's all. Thank you. Going away now. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, MG. Someone Bye. said Jade should be our first serious opponent. I don't know. I mean, do you think like, do you think that's how she'll eventually drop that title? This is like pure fantasy. I don't want now. that. I don't want her don't to drop either. the title. I think she should dominate for you know as long as possible. Forever, forever. She's great with that. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I'll I'll just skim over Raw. Mm-hmm. Nice to see Solo uh, Sokoa do the Umaga Simone and Spike. Simone and Spike. Very cool on the anniversary of his passing. Yeah. Umaga's passing. Bailey and Alexa Bliss both won triple threat matches to go on to face each other next week for a number one contendership with Bianca Bella. Did you see Bianca? <laughs> Hachi machi. <laughs> Track to the gills. Look at those abs on her. She's, those legs. She was jacked. She Unbelievable. Did, yeah, man. She looked great. She did. She great. looked fantastic. They, they really, like, they did such a great job with her. And I think, again, that's the testament to Triple H. People don't realize she she competed in, body, in a yes. bodybuilding competition. Yeah. So she was, I don't know if she was a guest, uh, you know, pres- whatever, or she was competing, but she mm. looked unbelievable. Yeah, let me ask you oh, something. Bless you. Thank um, you. I thought about this this morning. This is like this thought popped into my head. And you're a body guy. Mm-hmm. Did, if you look at it from an aesthetic and work rate perspective, did Triple H have the best body in the prime of his career of all time in pro wrestling? 
Did he have the best body in the prime of his career? Like, work rate-wise. Like, how he looked and also how he worked. There's yeah, plenty yeah. of guys that look uh, like a million bucks, but can't work for shit, right? Uh, I would say early Lesnar was up there. Okay. Uh, not as good as Hunter, for sure. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'll take that away. Um, Benoit. Okay. Benoit looked the best and he worked the best. Actually... That may not be true. But Hunter... Hunter 96 had, Benoit was much smaller. 98 Benoit was much smaller. But Hunter had that true um, bodybuilder physique. You're saying like 2000 Hunter. 2000 Hunter. Yeah. It's big pecs. Big pecs. Big. Like he's the biggest pecs, right? Uh, e- everything everything was, was working for him. You know? Uh, I, I wanted to ask you that today because I, I feel like that's a discussion. <laughs> weird discussion we can have at some point. Yeah. Pro Wrestling Joe in our chat room goes, I didn't manage to find you a foster home. Hachi, machi, Andrew at work. <laughs> Am I running an orphanage now? Is this is this my job? It's next door to Sapphires. It's yeah. Sapphires the Orphanage. <laughs> We're a charitable organization here. Mm-hmm. Uh, your mom works next door. <laughs> your mom works next doors. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? All right. Uh, Lashley and Rollins got into a brawl after Rollins kid bringing up that Lashley couldn't beat Brock Lesnar. That's going to continue on. I wonder what Lesnar's plans are for WrestleMania and Royal Rumble. We'll find that out soon. Cool. NXT, the New Day made a surprise appearance to challenge Pretty pretty de- Deadly. Say, uh, write it how, read it how she, he wrote it. Pretty Deadly. Pretty Deadly at NXT <laughs> Deadline. A pretty Deadly. Uh, like let's, go into NXT, let's go into AEW. We'll, we'll see yeah. how do this. Also, you guys, I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but... Andrew's very much like Ron Burgundy, where if it's on the screen, he will read it verbatim. And it's very dangerous because MG Geek has not pulled the trigger on just writing really incriminating stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just got to read everything. I know. You have to read ahead. Uh, Ricky Starks won the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal to eliminate eliminating Ethan Page. Uh, MGF comes out, cuts a great scathing oh. promo on him. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's magnifique. 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 Um, très bien. So, MJF comes out. He got that. He got that baguette from Mindy's Bakery. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work. I'm telling you. When C- when CM Punk lifted that first walnut brownie to his mouth, that was I, a signal. I, I gotta tell you. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you. Yeah. A lot of crazy shit happened at that scrum. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know what the most insane part was? The garbage bag filled with soda cans. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> it's angry. Just shaking, ah. rattling, empty cans. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. It's going to be on our conspiracy. Matt, what? Matt Spiracies. Matt Spiracies. There you go. We bring uh, our guests will be different people in the wrestling industry <clears throat> called Matt. Name Matt. Yeah. Matt Cardona, Matt Ryan. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Matt, yeah, perfect. That's all we had. All, we had. all right, go ahead. I know two people named Matt. Um, MJF comes out, cuts a scathing promo on Ricky Starks. Now, I want your opinion on this. You watch this, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Is MJF approaching with his promos that Scott Hall level of spooky fingers, where he can make anybody look like a douche if he's just like doing this shit? Yeah, he does. He kind of does do that. Right. Um, I have to tell you though. So. MJF started the promo out by calling him a dollar store Dwayne, mm. and he called him the Pebble. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, that kind of sucked. Like, I was like, yeah, I kind of could see it, you know? Like, yeah. I was like, uh, does that hurt him? Does that help in the future? I was totally wrong because the counter was he called him a fifth rate Roddy Piper, mm-hmm. and he called him Maxi Pad. And, and this was a great face to face promo. Yeah. Um, Ricky looked like a million bucks here. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm dying. Are you ah, <laughs> the ghosts are coming out of me. <laughs> the ghosts of the orphans are coming out of you. <laughs> I can't do this show anymore, man. I, I can't. People don't realize this is literally what it's like for like five hours at the bar when we go out. It's the best show on the planet. It's also oh. a good hang. I miss, I miss, I do miss hanging out with you. We haven't yeah, hung out too. in a while. Next week, let's do something. Yeah. Um, <sighs> listen, Ricky, Ricky had cut the best promo of his career on Wednesday night. That fired me up. It fired everybody up. MJF could have easily interrupted him with like some spooky fingers nonsense, but he didn't, you know, he let the guy roll. And you know what? I'm giving the guy a pass on the rock stuff because he's from new Orleans. 
Okay, fine. You know, and he's just a cool guy from Nolens. Is he from New Orleans? Yeah. I didn't know that. He is from the area. and uh, I, thought it, it was, I thought it was a very good show. It explains I, I, the Very swagger. good promo. Yeah, no, great promo. I, mm. I think he looked really good. Uh, you know, Brian Alvarez fantasy booked this so well. Did he really? He did. And I think it's a better... So, originally, wasn't it supposed to be the first match is for the ring and then he has a title match later on? Something right? like that, yeah. So... What he should have done was challenge him for the ring, like, right at that moment. That was Brian's thing, right? Uh-huh. Where there's, like, shenanigans, and there's, like, a ref bump, and he goes to hit him with the ring, but the ring goes flying. Ricky grabs mm-hmm. the ring, hits MJF, gets the one, two, three pin, and he now has the ring. And mm-hmm. now you set up the title match, and it's now one and one. He loses the title match. It's one and one. And you created, the like, another match somewhere down the line. I thought that was a really good... Yeah. Really good way of doing it. Brian spoke about this on Observer Radio and on Observer Live. I thought it was very well done, his plan. Way way better explained than I did right now. But yeah. next week it's 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 all it's all or nothing, right? Everything's on the line. I think they're gonna Jericho him. In what way? I think Ricky wins. He the has title? the belt for an hour into the show and then it gets taken away from him. I, oh my god, that would be great. Right? Oh, do the Jericho Triple H thing. Yep. I think that I like would be... that. That you know what? That's freaking exciting. But then, but here's the thing: mm-hmm. that got over really well in 1999. Yeah, right. I thought that was so freaking cool. Triple H had two of those matches, right? Didn't he have another one with Takamishinoku that was mind blowingly good? And they took the belt away from Taka. And, and no, no, no. <laughs> like people were like, like very yeah. slightly believing something could happen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That yes, was an yeah, unbelievable yeah, yeah. match. I do I've only that. seen it twice, yeah. and I, 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 it could be terrible by today's standards. I don't know if people would be happy with that result, where they, you know, there's some shenanigans and you got to reverse it. So now you set up a third match. I mean, I guess you could set up a, a second match like that. Exactly. But down the line, right? Yeah. Like this is a good litmus test. The crowd is behind Ricky. Uh, AW needs to make new stars, right? Video, yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? And he he can work. He can cut a promo. Guy looks great. I liked in his promo how he was like, you come out all wrinkly. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He shit's all wrinkly. Yeah, and, like yeah. you're cheap, you know? Fantastic. Uh, TNT and ROH TV champion Samoa Joe defeated Darby Allen to retain the TNT title. He killed Darby Allen the entire match. Darby just took the most insane bumps. This was a very vintage Samoa Joe. Nice to see him be super dominant before uh, his match on Friday against Juice Robinson, which came out of nowhere on Saturday. <laughs> I, I'm digging it. Yeah, me too. Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta with John Moxley defeated ROH Pure Champion Daniel Garcia and Jake Hager with Sammy Guevara on the outside. Afterwards, Tony played a tape that was pre recorded with Regal after mm-hmm. Full Gear, where he said, If this is airing, something bad happened to me. And he kind of explained in a very convoluted way. That this was a test for Moxley to never, you know, to always watch his back and to never fully trust every anybody. Yeah. Um, this was also a curse onto Max mm-hmm. to, you know, he's always been public enemy, enemy number one, and now he really is public enemy number one yeah. Yeah. with the title. And this also says this is the greatest test for Max to show his mental stamina mm-hmm. as a world champion because you know that title is a curse yeah and you all slowly go insane eventually right if you're holding the belt right i love that story mm-hmm. so not only was it a okay you want an opportunity here it is it's also this is your punishment exactly also it was a lesson for mox you know i at first i was like this is very convoluted the more i've said it i've more i've convinced myself that i it makes sense, but I don't know if it came across that way to everybody. I, I'll agree with you. I, I really enjoyed it. Now um, I dropped my pen. Now you dropped your pen. <laughs> oh, my bones. Oh, no. Are you, do I have to carry you to the train? Yeah, please. <laughs> please. I like the bodyguard, the end of the bodyguard. Yeah. I made that joke <laughs> yesterday, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. At the orphanage? No, no. Uh, uh, Mike tripped when he was like <laughs> on, like on the sidewalk. I'm like, oh, I gotta I carry like the Patriot. I gotta carry like the Patriot, Whoa. like the bodyguard, the Patriot. That was a good movie too. That was a great movie. Yeah. Um, Mel Gibson, another lunatic, another lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Listen, midnight nineties Mel Gibson. Oh, the best. Chef's kiss. Chef's, chef's kiss. Magnifique. Uh, uh, let's see where were we? Jade Cardgill, Layla Gray, and Red Velvet defeated Blue Sky, Madison Ray, and Kira Hogan. Tony Schiavone interviewed Soraya. We spoke about this inter- interrupted by Britt Baker. She challenged Soraya for 
to a tag match against mm-hmm. her and Jamie on January 12th in L.A. This is go. so, you know, they're in L.A. Yeah. Very interesting venue to have a surprise opponent. Mm-hmm. Sasha shows up. Maybe Snoop could show up because Snoop has that synergy with TBS and TNT, right? Wasn't yeah. she on that? Wasn't he on that show? Yeah, he was on the um the the show with Cody. Yeah, the Go Big, Go Big or Go Home. Yeah, whatever it was. Go called. Big. I never watched it. I yeah. never saw one. The episode. first season is very entertaining. I don't even know what it's about. It's uh people who could do who have crazy talents, and uh, they're you know mine like is? extreme. <laughs> <laughs> like naughty, the, naughty. I like the Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man! I didn't expect that. One. Sorry, sorry. You don't show that to the kids at the orphanage. Right? No, never. <laughs> oh no, never, never. Uh, so this is where the Sasha rumor begins. Mm-hmm. Very cool. The okay, so main event time. Yeah, acclaimed. Yeah, FTR. Yeah, AEW World mm-hmm. Tag Team Championship on the line. Correct. FTR currently holds the IWGP title, mm-hmm. the Ring of Honor title, mm-hmm. and the AAA yes. tag title. Man, this was a very good match. Uh, Further solidifying the acclaimed as a top tag team. I was not disappointed by the ending of this. No. However, convoluted ending here. On the screen, Mm -hmm. the gun club appears. Yeah. And they say that they have a present for FTR. And it's a letter in blood by them boys, the Briscoes. Them boys. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was two dog collars for a double double dog collar match at final battle. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe this is how you start taking the titles off of them. Because you get the ROH title off of them. You got the Briscoes on TV. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, They're going to have to drop those IWGP tag titles eventually. Probably at Wrestle Kingdom or wherever. Cool. Fine. Okay. And then they'll drop the AAA. And then you can start this, you know, back climbing up to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would have loved to see a winner take all opportunity with the Bucks. But that doesn't seem like it's happening now. So the internet, uh, as far as social media went, kind of blew up saying, like, because of the ending of this match, FTR is going to lose everything and they're going to go back to WWE. What do you think about that? No. I do not believe so. Not going to happen. Uh, I I think they're going to beat the Briscoes, to be honest with you, on Saturday. I think it's going to be a bloody, crazy-ass match. And uh, did the Briscoes need the win? No. They have, they've, had, they've had those belts 65 times. The Briscoes? Yeah. The Briscoes don't need the ROH titles again. I think but, but, but you need to take you need to take the you need to take FTR away from Ring of Honor at this point, right? Because they are gonna probably announce something for TV. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you want you want to establish the Ring of Honor as Ring of Honor and kind of separate a little bit. And ha- but have some guys mm-hmm. there for like a developmental reason. They're an interesting team. Cause I really do you think having do you think having them have the four titles is too much? No, I think it helped with them. No, no, I'm saying like if they won those AEW belts. Oh, would it be? No, I don't think it would be too on much. top. Like, no, I don't think it would be too much. I think it would have been a great moment, but it just didn't hasn't played out yet. And then they go to Impact, get those belts. Then they go to uh, they get the junior belts. You could do all of it. Go yeah. to WWE. They could drop weight and get the juniors. Uh, AEW Winter's coming 12 14 22 next week. MJF defends the AEW World Title and the Dynamite. Diamond Ring against Ricky Starks. Match four of the best of seven series between Death Triangle, which has two wins, and the Elite that has one. House of Black will also be returning in action. ROH Final Battle, 4 p.m. on pay-per-view and on Bleacher Report, I believe. Yeah. Chris Jericho defends the ROH title against Claudio Castagnoli. If Claudio loses, he must join the Jericho Appreciation Society. FTR defends the ROH titles against the Briscoes in a double dog collar match. Daniel Garcia defends against ROH TV champion. Uh, defends the ROH TV title, I should say, against Wheeler Yuta. Mercedes Martinez mm-hmm. versus Athena ROH women's title. Pure title. Uh, uh, pure title, not TV title. Yeah, I think, uh, it, I think it's a pure title. Yeah, he wrote TV title. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> pure title. <laughs> Mercedes Martinez versus Athena for the ROH women's title. Are we sure this is for the women's title, MJ? <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Ju- Samoa Joe versus Juice Robinson for the ROH Again TV title. Again for the TV title. Again for the TV title. <laughs> Swerve in our glory takes on Shane Taylor and JD Griffey. Dalton Castle and the boys defend the ROH six-man championship against Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony. Also, NXT Deadline. 
preview coming up here. Pre-show's 7.30 p.m. with Sam Roberts, Mackenzie Mitchell, and the queen of all wrestling media, Denise Salcedo, our very own Denise Salcedo. NXT champion Braun Breaker versus Apollo Crews. I'm looking forward for this match. Yeah. Nice opponent for Braun Breaker, and it gives Apollo something cool to do. Mm-hmm. Men's Iron Survivor Challenge match. Carmelo Hayes versus J.D. Mc- McDonough. I hate that name. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grayson Wa- Waller and uh, Joe Gacy and Axiom. Women's Iron Survivor Challenge. Zoe Stark, Cora Jade, uh, Kiana James, Roxanne Perez, and Indy Hartwell. I'm very curious how those matches do. Yeah. It's the first time for him. NXT tag titles. Pretty Deadly versus The New Day. Alba Fire versus... Uh, what is it? Isla Dawn. Isla Dawn. There you go. All right. Let's go. Oh, housekeeping. Here we go. Live mm. play-by-play Saturday night of UFC 282 with Matt Ryan and his friends. Join us on the Matt Men channel. You'll be able to watch this with us. He'll be doing live commentary and a lot of shenanigans. Third annual Matt Men Award ballots will be out after Saturday's show, check local social media for more information. All right, let's do our Q and A, boys and girls. Submit right. your questions here in the chat. We got ten. We got like seven minutes. All right, guys, we got seven minutes. Uh, if you want your question answered, feel free to super chat us. Uh, we're gonna jump into it right now. Uh, we got a couple of super chats here. One from Brandon Edwards. Are we close to Sammy Mania? Are we closer to Sammy Mania than Rock versus Reigns? We'll find out. That probably, uh, I, I think that Montreal show would be where to do it uh, if you're going to oh, do yeah. it. yeah. But I, I don't think so. I don't think, because the whole story is that this man is unbeatable. Mm-hmm. And you're taking a comedy act to beat him. You got to have someone that's a serious contender to beat him. I don't think we're in that mm-hmm. moment. I, I, I would love to see Sammy with that title, but I, I it weakens whoever beats him. Well, I think Sammy, if they're going to split the belts, I think Sammy is a great get for one of those belts. Sure. Yeah. You know? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, this is from James Nordor. Five bucks. Thanks, James. Do you guys see Darby Allen making a top guy run at the title? I feel like a Daniel Bryan Mania 30 type run could really put him over the top. I don't know, man. He He's great. He's a great attraction. Mm-hmm. I He's small. Yeah. He's very small. That kind of takes away from it. I, I don't know. Uh, Dan, uh, Danielson is much larger than Darby for sure. I mean, he's wider. Uh and also, you, you you have a decade or so of convincing people that Danielson is a mercenary when it comes to professional wrestling. Exactly. I think... They don't have that with Darby. Darby is a, a, a you know a, a bump machine. It's going to take Darby a couple of years to get to that Rey Mysterio level of like, you know, put the belt yeah, on Yeah, he has guy. time. I think it'll happen eventually. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You know, with Sting in his corner... Him with the title. You could do something. Yeah, you could do something. Pretty cool. cool. Yeah. You know, like the Daredevil world champion, him versus Jeff Hardy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Every but time. the whole match is on a ladder. Uh-huh. There's ladders everywhere. Oh, my God. Here, That's the other thing with the jumping ship from WWE to AEW. I do think the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian are are going to wind down their careers in WWE. I can see that. You know, you're going to get that one last like tag match that. or something. Yeah, I can see that. Somewhere. Uh, it's, this is from Balor Club Guy. Uh, TJF, my Matt Men, with Raw's 30th anniversary show being the last Raw before the Royal Rumble, would you rather have The Rock show up at Raw and announce his entry into the Rumble or save The Rock's surprise for the Rumble? Man, USA would love that. <laughs> Who wouldn't? That, 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 those conversations would be interesting. I don't know. I, I Maybe you could do like a video thing. He's like, he's like, I got something up my sleeve. I'll see you on Sunday. All cool like that? Not, yeah. not over the top? No, not over the top. Black Adam was a hit no matter what anybody says. Uh, this is from the Shadow Ranger. You could take one male and one female wrestler with you to your family reunion. Who would you take? Which family member would you most want to see them interact Gangrel with? and Luna Vachon. That's interesting. <laughs> ah! That's all I want. With, with who? With who in your family? Oh, Nana and Poppy. Frank and Norma, for sure. <laughs> Can you imagine that fucking conversation? <laughs> with Frank and Norma? <laughs> These two uh, ghouls? It's only funny because I know. Um, I don't know who who would I bring to a family reunion. The Rock. No, and, I, want, I want and I my want... mom. <laughs> and be like, oh, it's The Rock. Yeah, that's it. She'd say like, oh, you're so big. You're so big. <laughs> uh, that's an easy answer, right? Mine was super easy. Stop. I knew I've had this. Luna and Gangrel. I mean, are we going like like people that are alive? Yeah. 
I sure. mean, Luna, Luna passed away, unfortunately, yeah. but um, oh, I would be able to bring bonkers wrestlers. Fashion booger. I mean, Damien Demento used to come here, and my wife used to make him dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how nuts is that? I think Jonathan was about to say something. Jonathan, what, what was that? Just doink the clown. Doink, doink the clown. Doink the clown. Doink the clown. All right. Uh, this is from Connor. As much as I prefer him as a face, AJ, AJ Finn and Cody, Bullet Club Triple Threat. Freaking love it. Yeah, that'd be great. Love that match. What, what? You know what? Like, is Cody so far removed from the Bullet Club stuff that people forgot? I, I, I never saw him like true Bullet Club, but he was Bullet Club. For a while. Because you know why? They effed up. They never did the Civil War properly with Cody leading one side. Yeah. They never did it, and it, it, became, it became too convoluted near the end. Uh, this is from BC Knight. What's more likely to happen? Rampage becoming an HBO Max show or Rampage moving to TBS on a different night? Um, Rampage going to TBS on a different night. Okay. I'm with that. Uh, this is from Matt, our buddy Matt Reichel. With the reports of Roman possibly working both nights at Mania, is this a good or bad idea? I don't like it. I don't do like it i i just feel that the whole roman thing is the presentation of the pop and that mega opponent he's facing and if you do it twice i mean you could i guess you could i don't mm-hmm. I, it depends how you get there more than anything else right because we don't know how they how they would get there we don't know right. who the second opponent would be i guess it would be cody but i i guess we got to see how they play it out before we could say but i i don't want that i want i want there to be one defining moment i think mm-hmm. this this moment is him and Dwayne to solidify him as the next guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to. I want to see that. Uh, you want to do one more? Let's do two more. Okay. This is from Aaron. That's a good question. If Sammy's in the Rumble, do you think Cody would get booed if he wins? It depends if Sammy and him are the final two people. Yeah. Sammy needs to get eliminated by like Braun Strowman or some shit. You could do that Sammy wins. No. I I've heard multiple options here with how they would what they would want to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of them are true. I just don't know. I, I think everybody's feeling the confusion here of how how do you do this? I think Triple H knows. I think Triple of H he is, does. Triple yeah. H is he's he's getting him and Sean and whoever is is in control are getting. Do you know? You know what's wild? Sean Hunter has been part of AW WWE create. Hunter's been part of AW Creative since the beginning. Let's start that conspiracy. That's our conspiracy show. Hunter's been part in some effect part of WWE Creative mm. since 1996. Pretty crazy. There's nobody else that has transcended that 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 era. Smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. He was sitting in meetings with Vince all the time in 96 and 97, 98. Smart guy also never got in his own way. No. I think that's the big that's the big difference between him and a lot of people. Yep. You know, not bitter, not like living in a trailer park yeah. because the because the business. The business. You know. Um This is a good question from Jonathan. Question for Rich. Would you cock block me? Oh, I got it. We need time for that story. Well, we're gonna we'll do it next week. All week this guy's like, Andrew cock block me at the Ranger game. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, blah, that, blah. Was, that was a crazy moment. I need to hear this uh, story. I will. Uh, you know what? We'll save it for next week. Can you we'll tell me on the, on the ride? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, this is from Brandon. If Cody took it at Rumble, leaving Roman to fight Rock at Mania, who's the heel for Cody? Seth, all right? That could be... Uh, yeah, you could do that. You could absolutely do that. Seth or anybody... Unless Cody's the challenger. At, I know, but you don't want Roman mm. to lose. I think it's time for Roman to lose. You gotta lose big. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna build yourself up to be that guy, you have to lose big. I don't know. I, I don't I, I, I don't see how they could pull it off. I, I'm sure mm. they will. I just can't see it in my head. I'm very confused. But I'm also very I haven't ate or anything in like three days, so I'm very confused. You should eat. I also hit my head bef- 20 minutes before uh, you got here, and I'm very confused. How did you hit your head? <laughs> <laughs> I bashed it against the wall, screaming. <laughs> oh, like Goldberg? Yeah. Is that how you get ready for the podcast? That is how I get ready. Whoa. All right, let's do one more. I mean, I'm out. We're that's out it. Of here. All right, that's it. All right, guys, that's it for today. <laughs> uh, love each and every one of you. I will be back on Sunday, Wrestling Observer Live. Rich and I will be back next Friday. Yeah. Let's do uh, it. For 
Matt Men. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us everywhere. Podcasts are available, obviously. And, of course, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Until next time, boys and girls, we'll see you all later. Sorry, I